live from Studio 2A in Pix Plaza. This is the Pix 11 News with Tamsin Fidel and Corey Chambers. weekend of outrage after President Donald Trump's executive order banning people from certain Muslim majority countries. And that is why we thank you for being here for this Pix 11 News special unrest in America. I'm Tamsin Fidel. And I'm Corey Chambers. Tonight, President Trump is defending his travel ban, saying it is not a Muslim ban. Instead, he says it's about keeping our country safe. Yeah, but try telling that to tens of thousands of protesters and the dozens of people who've been detained at airports. Some of them have been sent home to countries that for now are apparently not safe in the eyes of the White House. Yeah, here's what we know right now. People from seven predominantly Muslim nations are being banned from entering the U.S. for three months. These are countries that the president says pose a terroristic threat to America. People fleeing from Syria are banned indefinitely. Noticeably absent from that list, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia. Currently, Afghanistan has 20 terrorist organizations operating within its borders, including ISIS and al-Qaeda. Pakistan is where Osama bin Laden lived safely for years before he was killed. And Saudi Arabia is where 15 of the 19 9-11 hijackers came from. In the first 48 hours, at least 109 people have been detained at America's airports and denied entry. Some have been granted special waivers to finally enter. But the other part of the story are these mass protests happening all weekend long in New York, New Jersey, and across the country. We've seen hordes of people turn out at airports and masses marching through lower Manhattan. Yeah, so many people impacted by this executive order, so many emotional stories, and so many questions tonight. We're covering all the angles with our team of reporters, Pix 11's Armin Chodhury and Dan Manorino. Know, both have really incredible stories to tell you tonight. But let's begin with Pix 11's Jay Dow with the story of a Syrian family who found a new life right here in New York City one year ago. Jay. Abdullah Furnas is getting by like so many other New Yorkers on this Sunday evening. He's working while his family relaxes at home. I need life for, for my kids. Only I need life for my kids. I'm working every day. I'm working hard for give a good life for my family. This seemingly mundane, ordinary existence is anything but when you realize Abdullah and his family are Syrian refugees who we first met in December 2015. The New York City is very good. And you have a lot of people, as you like it, me and me, I like it, a lot of people. Is Abdullah and his wife Iman fled their native Syria a few years ago for peace and security in the United States. This country, the best for me. They now worry about their future in this country, especially given President Trump's executive order on immigration, in which he proclaims, quote, the entry of nationals of Syria as refugees is detrimental to the interests of the United States and thus suspend any such entry. And actually, if, uh, I can't go back to my country. And even if I go, I can't, I can't come back here. So I don't know what I have to do. President Trump's executive order institutes a 90-day ban on immigrants and non-immigrant visas for people from Syria and six other countries, which the administration has deemed as having a connection to extremist jihadist terrorists. Although Mr. Trump signed the order late Friday afternoon, it did not die quietly in the daily news cycle, but instead triggered protests at JFK and other airports around the country, where incoming refugees and immigrants were held and slowly released across the country. President Trump, who initially brushed off accusations his administration is discriminating against hardworking, God-fearing Muslims who pose no threat to the United States, he addressed the issue in a Facebook post Sunday, writing in part, quote, to be clear, this is not a Muslim ban, as the media is falsely reporting. This is not about religion. This is about terror and keeping our country safe. There are over 40 different countries worldwide that are majority Muslim that are not affected by this order. 
And while we initially planned to interview a pro-Trump Facebook commenter to get the other side of this story, we thought it would be just as effective to hear from Abdullah's boss. My father made us. Okay. My father came to this country, poor man, but build a, build a, build a family. Michael Offman, who is half Palestinian. I think we should give the president a chance. Either he's going to make us or he's going to break us. As we have previously stated in our reporting on this topic, here in New York City is where policy meets reality, where a grateful Abdullah and Iman Ferdas now wonder what's in store for their family here and their relatives in their native Syria. What did it mean for you, for your family to be able to come live here in the United States? I will be very, very happy if my family will be here, but I don't want to be in my country because it's not, like, really safe. And within the last hour, we are getting reports that a gunman entered a mosque in Quebec City, shot and killed five people during evening prayers. It was no accident that back in December 2015, when we first met Abdullah and his family, he did not want us to divulge the address of his home. Tonight, he insisted that we take that same approach with his home and his workplace. And his family still remains hopeful that everything will remain smooth for their application to remain here permanently. Corey? Tamson. All right, Jay Dow. And of course, we're going to follow those developments out of Quebec very closely tonight. Thank you for that. Well, President Trump is using Twitter to blast fellow Republicans. Today, Senators Lindsey Graham and John McCain released a joint statement saying that the president's executive order does more to help terrorists than actually to protect Americans. Well, here is what President Trump tweeted a short time ago. He wrote that their joint statement is wrong that they are both sadly weak in immigration. The president then tweeted that Graham and McCain should focus their energy on legal immigration and ISIS rather than looking to start World War III. Senator Chuck Schumer becoming visibly emotional at his press conference earlier this morning. The Senate Minority Leader choked up as he spoke, to, uh, spoke about the president's travel ban, saying he will, quote, claw, scrap, and fight with every fiber of his being until the executive order is overturned. This executive order... Was, was mean spirited and un American. All right, having a difficult time there. Schumer says that Senate Democrats will introduce legislation to overturn the order as quickly as possible. Well, immigrant communities feel like they are in crisis around our area. This executive action has sparked so many questions and so many concerns. Pick 7 I mean Chaudhry is live in Midwood tonight, where an emergency meeting was actually held to address some of these fears. I mean, Corey, listen, a lot of the people we spoke to say that they are somewhat comforted by the demonstrations that they have seen, but there is a lot of fear, so much fear, because there is so much that is unknown at this point. We spoke to people in the community who are from Yemen, who are from Sudan. They have family members. One in particular mentioned a sister-in-law who is on maternity leave, traveled to Sudan to be with family, and now they're not even certain if she'll be allowed to be back home. We have family that just came from a JFK. Um, her mom has been detained because she's a green card holder. Osama Mustafa is Sudanese American, himself a citizen. But many of his family members who are green card holders now directly impacted by President Donald Trump's executive order, an immigration ban listing Sudan among the seven countries whose citizens will not be allowed to enter the United States. This is was really a completely shocking to all of us. Mustafa is not alone. Standing room only at this catering hall in Brooklyn as Muslim families search for answers in a time when so much is unknown. Everything is confused right now. Congresswoman Yvette Clark hosted this panel with representatives from the mayor's office and also with local attorneys, all in hopes of providing some guidance. It will live up to its greatest potential because we stood together this evening. Yeah. Yeah. 
Ghani Abushi, a Muslim American attorney, was at JFK all day yesterday and all night. Today, she is warning anyone from the impacted nations to travel at their own risk. And if you do, do not sign anything at customs until you have legal advice. There, there are no answers. There's the executive order, which is unconstitutional. It's vague. It's discriminatory. Um, it's bad for our country, and there's no guidelines to it. Meanwhile, the fears in this community of diverse Muslims from dozens of different countries grows. To them, this is an attack on their community, on Muslims. And if there is a ban against seven nations, they believe that list could grow and their family impacted next. Are you worried about leaving the country? I do. I do, because I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen at the airport. And the president said in tweets and in statements, he says this is not a ban against Muslims. This is not against Muslims. Do you believe him? I don't believe him. The majority of the Muslims that we spoke to here at this particular meeting do hail from Pakistan, a country that has been criticized for not being on that executive order list. Now, many people say, while this is a list of seven, many Pakistani Americans here say Pakistan could soon be later added and their families, again, impacted by this travel ban. And you heard that man say it right there, and we heard it a number of times tonight over and over again. Everyone we spoke to convinced that this is a ban on a particular group of people here living in the United States and also their families coming to visit them. We are reporting live from the Midwood section of Brooklyn. I'm Narmeen Chaudhry, PIX11 News. Narmeen, thank you for their stories tonight. Yeah, you can just hear the fear mm -hmm. and see it on their faces tonight. Uh, well, if protesters are the bark, then it's the attorneys who are the bite. Immigration experts are going above and beyond in these past 48 hours. Tonight, we're exploring some of their challenges as they try and move forward. Also, one key question for many is how the order affects green card holders and people with dual citizenship. We're going to tell you what you need to know next. Now, a PIX11 News special report, Unrest in America. Here we are just one week into the new Trump administration, and we have travelers stranded around the world. We have protests swelling as well, all in response to the president's order, closing off America to people from seven largely Muslim countries. And there is mass confusion tonight. One big question that we're hearing over and over, what does this order mean for people who are here legally with green cards? Well, picks up Dan Manorino joining us now live in lower Manhattan with another very personal story out there. Hi, Dan. Hey there to both of you. And yeah, you're right behind me is a New York City staple, a corner deli. This one in particular is run by two Americans that were born and raised. They were born and raised in a hospital here in New York City. The big question for them, because they are Americans, is the fact that their spouses and loved ones are actually green card holders. Many of them scared and confused as to what's to come. Many of them, one of them in particular, actually, has a wife who is in Yemen stuck there. So for them, the question is, what's to come? Will you be able to see your wife again? I can't answer that right now. I wish I can. I wish I can say I'm, I'm, I'm flying to Yemen or they're coming over. But now everything just turned 360. 24-year-old Haran Zakari is an American citizen born here in New York City at Bellevue Hospital. Here's a menu for free delivery. This deli on the corner of Stanton and Allen Streets in Lower Manhattan is his second home. His wife and adorable one-year-old daughter, however, are in Yemen, one of the seven countries in President Trump's new travel ban. Haran had begun the process of legally bringing them here to America. There's a turmoil going down in Yemen, so I had applied to bring my wife and daughter over. Now with the new law, there's no way that they can come over here for a better opportunity. What is life like back in Yemen for your wife and your daughter? Right now it's very difficult just because of the war that's going on. And now Haran is afraid to leave in fear of what happens when he would return. Because just in the past two days, Haran's own brother knows of people with green cards who have been stopped and detained at airports. Their own family members stopped at JFK. I know a lot of people that was stopped. I had uh, some people returned from Qatar, some people returned from Egypt. 
because of this law that he came up with. And they had green cards. They had green cards. And they were stopped. They were stopped. While President Trump says this is not a Muslim ban. Seven countries that he banned are all Muslim, so how is this not a Muslim ban? It doesn't make any sense. There is growing confusion on what exactly happens with green card holders. At first, senior officials within Homeland Security interpreted the president's order to not apply to anyone with a green card coming from those banned countries, hence the chaos and confusion at airports. Go, go, but this morning, Reince Priebus, the president's own chief of staff, took a step back. The executive order doesn't affect green card holders moving forward. I've said that. However, follow me here. Priebus then flipped right in the blink of an eye and confused so many, like Haran and Mohammed, saying green card holders could, in fact, be stopped and detained. If they have a person that's traveling back and forth to Libya mm -hmm. or Somalia or Yemen, I would suspect within their discretion, they might ask a few more questions at JFK or some other airport when someone's coming back and forth. My uncle has a green card. Is he afraid to leave? He's shocked. He, he, like, I call him and say he was like in fear. Leaving legal, green card holding, law abiding citizens trapped, afraid to visit their own families like they've done for their entire lives. They can't go nowhere. Right now, they felt like they're in a cell. When you're in a cell, you can't go nowhere. It's like you surrendered. And leaving Haran, who wanted to promise his wife and daughter a happier life here in America, simply helpless. Now I can't make that promise that a husband is supposed to make to his wife. So it's very difficult as a husband. So for those two men, they are, after all, American. They know the importance of protecting this country, but they say there is a right way and there is a wrong way to go about doing that. What keeps them going, however, is over the past two days, the abundance of New Yorkers who have come into their deli from all races, all religions, all creeds, hug them to show their support and say they stand with them. That provided them the optimism for hopefully a brighter future. We are live in Lower Manhattan tonight. I'm Dan Manorino, PIX 11 News. You know, that message being heard around the country tonight. Dan, thank you so much. All right, let's keep talking about what Dan mentioned, because the bottom line is if you are a green card holder and stop by Customs and Border Agents, you want to know what to do. Well, first, you do not have to give, give up your green card. You're also advised not to sign Form I-407, even if you're told it will make things easier for you. You have the right to a hearing with an immigration judge and demand to speak to an attorney. The backlash from President Trump's executive order to ban immigrants and refugees from certain countries has drawn a lot of criticism from Democrats and some skepticism from Republicans in Congress. Yeah, it sure has. Joining us now to talk about this is Congressman Gerald Nadler, the representative from New York's 10th Congressional District in Manhattan. Thanks for being with us. I know it has certainly been a long weekend. Uh, you were at the airport for the majority of the day mm -hmm. yesterday. But let's talk first about um, probably the most recent information that was uh, released or, or um, something that was released earlier from President and Trump uh, trying to clarify, it seems, this travel ban, saying that his policy is similar to what President Obama did in 2011 when he was banning uh, visas for refugees from Iraq for six months. Well, like the majority of what President Trump says, it apparently, it's not true. The president, there was no, there was no halt to immigration from Iraq in 2011. Uh, there was a slowdown because they were instituting new, uh, new additional security checks. So as well, they the, stopped processing all applications for Iraqi refugees for six months. No, no, that, they, I, that's, that's, that's not, from ABC News. I, you know, that, that's, 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 the, that's not the information I have. Okay, that they that they added some security checks and the numbers went down, but the numbers, but they but they continued to process them. Okay. All right, so you're just saying this is absolute incorrect information. That's, that's, from what, that's what my information is, yes. Okay. What do you say to the people that agree with this policy? There was a poll out from Quinnipiac um, beginning of the year, in January, showed 48% of the people polled versus, I believe it was 42, felt like this type of policy was the right thing to do. What do you say to those people? Well, they're wrong. They've been... They've been uh, this is half the country. I understand. Half the country can be wrong. Uh, the fact of the matter is that this will not increase our security in any way. There are zero people from uh, those seven countries who participated in uh, terrorist incidents in the United States in the last 40 years. Zero. Uh, there are a lot of there are a good number of people from Saudi Arabia and Egypt, which are not included, who did participate in, in planning 9/11 and some others. So why weren't so, those included in this ban? I don't know. Maybe the president has business interests in those countries. I don't know. I know he does have business interests in those countries. But we're talking about Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Afghanistan, Egypt, and and in fact, 
the terrorist incidents, the Islamic terrorist incidents that have occurred in this country, came either from people who came into this country from Europe, where we have, where, or we're, we're homegrown. You know, we're Americans. Um, the fact is that 20 million people a year come into the United States uh, under the, you know, as tourists. That is where we probably ought to have additional vetting. Uh, so this will not increase our security at all. What it will do, um, besides being very cruel and uh, counterproductive, I mean, two of the people we were dealing with yesterday were refugees from uh, uh, Iraq who had to get out of Iraq because they were targets of assassination uh, or bombing attempts because they had worked in protecting the American military. They had worked with our troops for 10 years. They were targeted because uh, some groups there thought they were traitors. And we don't let them into this country. We send them back to Iraq where they can get murdered. Who's going to help us if that's our policy? Where do we go at this point? There's protests going on. We know that. There's a lot of criticism of the ban. Is there anything that Congress, lawmakers do going forward to tweak this, fix this, clear up well, the confusion? I, I, think the, I think the courts are going to throw out the ban because it's clearly unconstitutional as a violation of freedom of religion, and it's clearly illegal under the immigration law. Um, if the president wants to have a reasonable uh, policy, if he thinks that we're not doing enough screening, enough vetting, then propose increased vetting. Um, and that Congress would certainly look at. But uh, that's not what he's proposed. You could make a case probably that we should have better vetting for, uh, for um, um, tourists for the 20 million tourists who come into this country. I mean, we're, we're talking about a few hundred thousand refugees. The 20 million tourists are the more likely uh, um, source of any kind of, of, of terrorist activity because they're, they're, they're giving the most cursory, if any, vetting at all, and there are 20 million of them. And some of them come from countries that are close allies of ours where there have been a lot of, uh, of terrorism. Um, if you really want to do something, that you should probably look at that area. All right, Congressman, we appreciate you taking time out to speak with us. I know you can go going back to Washington, and for you, uh, the fight is beginning. It's an interesting conversation that we're all having, and uh, your voice is one of many that we're listening to tonight. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Congressman. All right, guys, we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back. Well, we have seen a lot of protests in the wake of the president's immigration order, but the ones making less noise still got a lot done. Lawyers across the country rushed to airports this weekend, meeting with families of detained travelers and offering legal services pro bono, many saying they felt like they had to do something to protect the rights of immigrants. An attorney who was on the front lines at JFK this weekend joining us now tonight. Yeah, Jordan Wells with the New York Civil Liberties Union. Thanks so much for being here. We've all seen the pictures of what's happening in the airport, but you have been closer than anyone because you're actually dealing with the folks who are kind of in limbo. So the first question is, are there still people, as we talk right now, still in limbo tonight? As of when I left the airport around 6.30 tonight, there were still people in limbo, still people detained, and we're concerned that CBP is not processing these people through and letting them through as they should. All right, so let's talk about that. Can the Department of Homeland Security at this point, can they simply ignore the court orders? No, they can't, and that's why overnight we sought emergency relief for the court to clarify that, that they had to comply with, with the order that the court had issued yes, last night. There is a victory for the ACLU, but this is uh, in, in court, but this is only a small victory. This is only a small part of the order, isn't it? That's right, and so we're going to be expanding the challenge to the unconstitutional executive orders that were issued this week, including by bringing uh, a challenge under the uh, Establishment Clause, which says that the, the government cannot prefer or unprefer sort of discrimination Certain countries against anyone, in origin. Any, any religion specifically. All right. Thank you so much. I know there are still a lot of questions, and I'm sure we will call on you uh, from time to time as we move forward in all of this. Jordan Wells, thanks so much for being here with us tonight. Thank you. My mother is an ordained minister. I'm a Muslim. She didn't do backflips when I called her to tell her I converted 17 years ago. But I tell you now, we put things to the side, and I was able to, I'm able to see her She's able to see me. We love each other. The love has grown, and that stuff is minutia. It's not that important. A powerful acceptance speech at the Screen Actors Guild Awards tonight. That was actor Mahershala Ali, who won for Best Supporting Actor for his role in Moonlight. During his speech, he talked about his own story in light of the current political climate, explaining that love can overcome differences. That speech going viral tonight. And thank you so much for joining us for this special report. Yeah, it will certainly be a busy week in Washington and all across our country. We will bring you the very latest starting at 5 a.m. on the PIX11 Morning News. And, of course, stay up to the minute with us on the PIX11 app. Have a good night. We'll see you back here on Monday.